Hi, everybody. I'm Gloria Moraga. This is the Political Woman Podcast. Israel is at war, and the United States is pledging full support. The people of Israel are under attack, orchestrated by a terrorist organization, Hamas. In this moment of tragedy, I want to say to them and to the world and to terrorists everywhere that the United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. It's Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Here are some headlines. 900 dead in Israel. 150 held hostage. And 600 and 89 Palestinians are now also dead. Early Saturday morning, Hamas launched an attack by land, sea, and air on Israel. The terrorists, among other things, went from home to home, killing Israelis. At one point, they attacked a venue, killing hundreds of concert goers mostly young people, and they took women, children, and the elderly hostage. Here are some headlines from Monday from the New York Times. Israeli Israel orders siege of Gaza. Hamas threatens to kill hostages. And this is a quote. Israel's defense minister said the authorities would block deliveries of food, water, and fuel into the already blockaded enclave. A spokesman for Hamas's military wing threatened to execute a hostage each time an Israeli airstrike hit Gazans in their homes. I spoke today with Professor Mel Hyman about the Gaza Strip and what the hell is going on there. So I I see a lot of carnage before this round is done. I see Hamas as overplaying their hand, politically being inexperienced, and setting back the Palestinian cause for a generation. Nobody would go after civilians and hope to win the battle for hearts and minds globally. I've been to the Middle East three times. Most Israelis and Americans have no clue what the Palestinians have been enduring. The U.N. votes have made it clear, but the public doesn't follow what the U.N. has to say. I was there during the first intifada, and if any Israeli rabbis would have seen what I was seeing, they would have demanded enforcement of the Oslo Accords of 91. They didn't. They still don't understand what's going on. There's apartheid in that area, and the Palestinians and Israelis rarely meet in Israel, and they've been demonized by their political leaders. So it's hard to find middle ground to move towards some sort of compromise. So the horrible situation in Gaza is only going to get worse. More lives are at risk and more lives will be lost. The United States Congress. So where is Congress during this? There is a major world conflict. And both the House and the Senate are not in session. A-W-O-L. The House is currently basically crippled. It's like a rudderless ship. There's no speaker. Republicans irresponsibly adjourned after ousting their speaker, Speaker McCarthy. Ex-Speaker McCarthy. And then they went home. Well, they came back today. They kind of scraggled in. And they met behind closed doors, and they're going to meet again behind closed doors. And apparently, the word is, nothing really happened. They're not agreeing. They're agreeing to disagree. There's no consensus on who will be the next speaker. And right now, the vote is expected on the floor on Wednesday. The Senate is also adjourned. I don't, for some reason, I, I don't know, this just blows my mind. The Senate is adjourned until next Monday, like a week from now. And uh, bottom line in all this, people, no work is being done on any of the budget bills. 
So that means the little, you know, temporary reprieve that we got by them funding the government until November is just like BS because this is all going to happen again. Which brings me to nominations. So this is one of the things that really just frosts my cake about the fact that they're, they're on break. Nominations. They're being held up. And it's not just military appointments, but also State Department officials, like, for instance, ambassadors. Oh, you think we don't need them? We do need them. Because right now, with everything that's going on in the world, we need a voice in these countries. And I'm telling you what's going on here right now. Republicans are playing politics with these nominations. They want to hurt Joe Biden. And instead, they are hurting our country. Now, this is something Mitch McConnell did to President Obama. Mitch held up many of Obama's nominees, but Mitch also blocked a lot of what Obama was trying to do legislatively. The main holdup from McConnell was Obama's Supreme Court nominee. Let's get back to now. In the aftermath of the Hamas attack, Democrats immediately noted that GOP senators have routinely blocked key military and State Department nominations related to Israel and the Middle East. So right now, we don't have a United States ambassador in place in Israel, Egypt, Lebanon, Oman, or Kuwait. Honestly, my friends, honestly, this is criminal. This is just criminal. And I was reading some article today and it's like, well, China has ambassadors to these countries. Russia has ambassadors to these countries. The ambassadors to Oman and Lebanon have been awaiting a Senate vote since June 1st. The ambassador for Kuwait has been on hold since April. Let's just blame, and I'm blaming him, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. He's blocked all diplomatic nominations in June. Here's why. You're going to just, you won't believe when I tell you why. Rand Paul is demanding more information about the COVID outbreak. (laughs) Are these people just totally nuts or what? I think they're just doing it on purpose. They're just making up this stuff just to hurt the country. Yeah, and they want to hurt Democrats. But gee, many Christmas. This, This whole thing about with Rand Paul, The State Department has repeatedly said, repeatedly, that they do not have the information that Rand Paul wants from the State Department. But yet, he's still holding them up. I did a post on the warships that we're sending to the Mediterranean near Israel. And here's a note. The Fifth Fleet yesterday moved more military assets closer to Israel. However... The next admiral in charge of the 5th Fleet can't move into that post because of the delays by Senator Tommy Tupperville from Alabama. This is the same delays that I've talked about before. What the hell? And why people of Alabama, Republicans or Democrats, come on, put some pressure on this dude. This is ridiculous. This is this hurts our country. Damn it. It's ridiculous. And it's it's hurting the military. It's hurting the men and women in the military. I don't know how they get away with this. I just don't. I got a lot of comments on I did a 1 minute post, 1 minute video on the USS Gerald Ford strike group that is on its way to the Mediterranean. And I listed all the different warships. Now, the information that I got that I shared in that video all came from the Pentagon. It was a Pentagon 
press briefing. And part of the reason the Pentagon does this is because they want the world to know that we have power, that we have a great, strong, powerful Navy, despite what Tupperville is doing. But take a listen, take a look at that video. I researched these ships yesterday, and it was so much fun reading about them, reading about what they can do. The One of the ships that's on its way is the USS Roosevelt. And it says here, and uh, this is from the Pentagon, she represents the best American shipbuilding and the most advanced combat system capability that has ever gone to sea. And it talks about the weapon system that's on board and all the things that the weapons system can do. Someone criticized me and said, well, you're just giving our enemies all this information. This is actually public information that the Pentagon likes to brag about. The Pentagon's bragging about our capabilities, not giving away any secrets. Unlike former President Trump, who's had access to these top secrets, apparently shared some with this Australian dude who makes boxes. That was another video and post I did. Take a listen. TikTok or YouTube. Please follow me there. So the ships are on their way. And it's a way to show support for Israel, but also a way to just warn other countries, enemies of Israel, not to step out of line. Finally, I wanted to just give you a quick update on President Biden. Remember the President Biden classified documents that they found somewhere in his garage or whatever? Apparently, this was all set up before the whole war thing in in Israel. But for the past two days, it was Sunday and Monday, the president met with Robert Hur, Robert K. Hur. He is the special counsel investigating how classified documents improperly ended up in President Biden's home and an office he used after leaving the vice presidency. The voluntary interview, quote, was conducted at the White House over two days, Sunday and Monday, said a White House spokesperson. And I also read that that case could be closed soon. So now before you all start thinking that, well, he's getting special treatment, not really. Remember, President Biden fully cooperated with the Justice Department and turned over the documents as soon as he realized he had them. And this is quite different from the Trump case. Quite different. I'm Gloria Moraga, political woman. I just read a fantastic story because my daughter asked me about the Middle East, the Gaza Strip. And I kind of looked at her and said, honey, it's a long story. And she said, well, give me the short version. So I I did. I, I did a quick kind of recap. I just read a fabulous article in the Washington Post. And when I was down toward the end of the article, it said, share this article. It can be read free. So what I think I'm going to do tomorrow is just do what I've done with some other podcasts is just read that article, quoting from the article, just reading it into the podcast. I don't know if that's a violation of the rules. I've done it before and it hasn't caused a problem. I'm giving full credit to the Washington Post and to the authors of the article, and it's fascinating. It's great. It's just really fascinating, and I will share it. I'll put the link to it in the information. So I'm going to try to get that done tomorrow, depending on what's going on in my life. And I want to say I've been late with this podcast for a very special reason, a very sad sad reason. I have mentioned before that my dog has been really sick. I'm going to cry. I'll try not to cry. I found out that my dog Thor, a little Maltese, just, you know, about five pounds, 
just my best friend. He's really been here for me since I was forced into retirement. I think you all, most of you that have listened to some of my podcasts know that I was pushed out of my job at the university by two really mean people. And then I started doing uh, one-on-one talking about communications and bullying and how I was kind of bullied out. But I was forced into retirement. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be at home. I wanted to be working. And little Thor was always here for me, always wanting to do stuff, play in the garden, go for a walk. He loved his car rides. He loved his treats. And I hadn't even really realized how how much I depended on him. I mean, I I loved him so much, but I didn't realize how much of my life he was a part of. Because I, I I do, I have a family, I have daughters, nieces, nephews, sister, brother. I mean, I have a life, but little Thor was kind of the center of my life for a long time and helped me get through my forced retirement. And found out since the first of the year, he'd been suffering from this heart valve problem. And he slowly but surely through the months got worse and worse and worse. And he had a bad cough and it was affecting his lungs. Fluid was leaking into his lungs and he was basically, the doctor said, drowning. And he he wasn't himself. He would look at me like, why do I hurt so much? Anybody who's had pets knows what this is like. And I've had to put pets to sleep before. But I I had to say goodbye to my little boy last week. And it was so hard. And I'm still not coping. I'm not doing great. Because everything reminds me of him. Go for a drive in the car, no Thor. Go up to bed, no Thor. He used to do this thing where I I would give him a treat, a little chewy bone to chew on when we'd go upstairs, and he would fling, throw it up in the air and do a happy dance, and happy dance all around it. So that's that's where I've been. I, I found it hard to focus and put the podcast together. So that's where I've been. Sorry to be... Uh, such a big baby. I'm Gloria Moraga. I'm a political woman. Worried about what's going on in the world. Worried about my country. So I try not to take long breaks. All of you, please take care. I love you. Thank you for being there. And please be safe.